mass street protests. <laughs> running battles, bloody confrontations, <laughs> countless arrests and condemnation from the international community are some of the historical moments that gripped Kenya in the 90s as civil societies, a section of the clergy, opposition members of parliament, and a section of youth, especially from major universities, led protests against the government, agitating for comprehensive constitutional reforms. <laughs> Among the civil societies was the National Convention Assembly, an umbrella of various organizations whose executive wing was the National Convention Executive Council, the NCEC. Professor Kivuda Kibwana, the current Makweni governor, was NCE spokesman and reveals that initially they were supported by organizations which were offshoots of international bodies, for instance, the International Commission of Jurists, Kenyan Chapter, and FIDA. And part of why uh, some of the initial civil society work was done through those organizations was uh, they uh, enjoyed some protection from the international level because ICJ uh, uh, is an international body. So a Kenyan chapter was harder to be cracked uh, for, for, the, for the national government to crack upon it. Civil societies continued pushing for political and civil rights and were led by, among others, Kenya Human Rights, Center for Law and Research International, and League of Women Voters, which were agitating for reforms. Davida Lamba was a co-convener of the NCEC. Initially, they tried to uh, do the, uh, the theoretical work that, that was required as a basis for constitutional change and for also educating the citizenry. And there was a lot of uh, sensitization, like people would meet in conferences. And I remember then the state would say that these are elite people who are uh, being given money by uh, uh, Wazungu and they want to destabilize the country. And uh, uh, this money should be used in proper development uh, because the, the, the truth was, of course, the international community was funding, uh, was funding uh, these NGOs uh, by and large. From 93 till about uh, 95, there were many attempts between the civil society organizations uh, and the politicians in opposition at that time to unify, uh, to uh, create a, a mechanism and a process uh, in how to uh, start the struggle uh, for um, uh, Katiba Mupia. The NGOs were, were quite robust. They, uh, they had a mission. They felt that uh, the country had to change, and there was a lot of volunteer work. Uh, we came to a situation where there was also initially a parallel attack on one partisan from the religious sector. And that is when the Dingis, the Muges, the Njoyas, Kuria, Gitari, eh, Oku, Okulu, Bishop Okulu, when, when also eh, the faith sector, they realized that the, the, the worshippers eh, were in a bad state. There was hardly any economy. There were hardly any civil rights. Eh, so they had to speak. My own... Uh story about uh, activism uh, goes back to my days at the University of Nairobi, uh, uh, standing up for uh, uh, freedom of expression and academic freedom at the time. Uh, in 1969, I was suspended along with uh, Apollo and Jonjo and uh, uh, Wari Wakataka and others uh, 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 for a peaceful uh, uh, assembly that we had convened in Kamakunji because uh, the university administration, the principal, denied uh, us to have uh, Joramogi uh, to come and speak to the students at Taifa Hall 
on the role of uh, uh, free and fair elections in a, uh, uh, in a democratic Kenya. Cyprian Nyamwamu had just come from the university and joined the reform movement and later would rise to the leadership of NCEC and the National Convention Assembly. The NCEC was the house of all the Kenyans who wanted reforms in this country. And there were five key sectors that uh, were in NCEC. Not only the civil society, but uh, the religious leadership that was pro-reform. We had a very strong opposition presence because civil society was unable to organize the crowds that politi politicians in the opposition were able to do. So we had Mwai Kibaki, we had Raila Odinga, we had Romalo Kijana, James Orengo and others. We had a very strong presence from professional associations and the academia. So there were university lecturers like Akna Smokin Wanjala, Professor Kivutha Kibwana and others. In 96, uh, the National Convention Planning Committee was formed. Uh, this committee, NCPC, was very broad-based. It had the religious sector, the civil society sector, the academic sector, the opposition political sector, and so on. And of course, Kanu was always invited to be part of it. Whether they uh, denied or declined uh, uh, invitations, that was another matter. So when now the four C's, when the, 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 the clarions, when all those uh, civil society groups uh, come together with the, the, the faith and uh, with the, now the political opposition, and this is now when you get a uh, uh, national convention assembly whose executive arm was uh, NCC. We spoke with one voice, uh, given now what NGOs have uh, done in terms of saying that this is how our constitution should look like. And also, uh, when we begin to, to have, particularly in the 1997, we begin to have uh, demonstrations. Uh, to say that we now must have a constitution and this is the kind of constitution that will be required. The NCC now was born and it pushed, particularly through the National Convention Assembly and the NC NCC as its uh, executive uh, arm. And uh, uh, we had the mass action, you know, led by people like Davinda Lampa, Gibson Kamau, William Mutunga. In accordance with the plan laid out by NCE's National Planning Committee, the first National Convention Assembly was held in April 1997 in Limuru, where Professor Kivuda Kibwana was appointed NCC spokesman. Politicians joined the bandwagon. The first National Convention Assembly uh, established the agenda for reform. That was the outcome. Uh, and um, so that agenda then became the basis for the struggle for uh, people-centered constitutional reform and a new constitution. The opposition realized that uh, we could do business together. Uh, and they uh, therefore also uh, uh, became partners. We were able to set the agenda and push the agenda across the country through convention assemblies. So we had assemblies everywhere in all the districts. Those days we didn't have the counties. And we even went to the constituencies. We conducted, uh, uh, I remember, 129 uh, constituents convention assemblies. The leadership of, uh, of NCA, that is NCC, had made a commitment that if you were a convener or a co-convener in NCC, you will not vie for political office, which helped us to unify the politicians, because politicians get very threatened by any other alternative leadership that comes into being, and particularly as get closer to the, the election year. But that commitment by us, that none of us would vie for office, uh, actually kept, the, uh, kept us unified until uh, 1997. Because of all forces that wanted change coming together, they used to have weekly meetings of the Executive Council and would have periodic National Convention assemblies just to take stock that would have representations from all over the country. It, it, it had a lot of force. And uh, I think initially it had been underestimated. Even some of the religious sector had civil society organizations 
uh, doing civic education, particularly doing civic education, because it was easy to do civic education through, through faith uh, institutions, because the government could not attack those. Uh, because when we, when we did it on our own, a civil society, I remember we'd go to places and there would be police. Uh, like once, I think we went to Kamega, and there was police uh, to stop us from doing civic education. And I remember even the police didn't have, uh, they, they were dispatched quickly and they didn't even have money for lunch. So we stayed there the whole day with them. Uh, we had to buy, you know, so, soda and bread to eat together. And now to do the civic education to the police to tell them why, you know, we are doing these things that, uh, you know, we are doing. I remember Joya leading us into prayer and speaking the things that we are coming to tell the people in prayer, through prayer. And maybe somebody was also intervened to pray. Uh, sometimes we would even try to sing the national anthem so that the police would not beat us up, although they would still beat us up. Uh, it was because of the resolve of all these sectors to work together and, and try to agitate for, uh, first of all, the, the one-party state uh, to be changed, and then eventually now the constitution. The major uh, event of 97 in terms of a mass protest was the Sabah Sabah of 97, and this was a countrywide protest uh, uh, to demand uh, reforms, and, and, and that was bloody. Uh, I think 22 young people were killed, many were injured and, um, and maimed. If, if I remember Sabah Sabah, 1997, I was in college, and uh, the police descending on us at uh, Uhuru Park and uh, beating uh, my brother Captain Bati and the Reverend Doc Dr. Timothy Njoya, subconscious, they were left for the dead. And the police were there, uh, and they weren't doing anything. So they gave the goons a free hand, so that's what, that, that's what used to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the goons would meet us each time, we'll go to Kamakunji, walk to any demonstration and that sort of stuff. And they even uh, uh, invaded the uh, All Saints Cathedral, because uh, many had gone in there to seek refuge, and they were merciless.